Plasticity since it was released has been my go-to for hard surface modeling. It's quick, it's slick, and you can easily make a lot of complex shapes quickly. That would be super tricky in polygon software. But Plasticity is not polygon software. It is a NURBS based CAD modeler that uses a powerful uh, kernel, which is called the Siemens Parasolid kernel. And this is why you can make all of these hard surface shapes easily. It's because the underlying technology was really initially designed for engineering purposes, but the team at Plasticity made this software with artists in mind. So it's an engineering product with an artist friendly UI. Now, a lot of artists, in order to texture our models or to animate them, we want to convert them back into polygons. And that's where we run into a little problem. Now, Plasticity does a great job of converting your object into triangles or ingons, but converting them into quads, it's a bit iffy. Now, welcome to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. And in this video, we're gonna talk about converting your CAD model into quads. Now, if you're trying out Plasticity or you wanna try out Plasticity, there's a 30 days free trial. And then if you like it, you can use the code REFUGE10 to get a 10% discount off any uh, license. Now, before we get into it, let's just talk about why the F do we want to use quads anyway? Now, in a lot of cases, especially with hard surface objects, you will never even need to think about quads. And you will see thousands of posts on Reddit and another forum saying you need all quads, quads this, quads that, quads, 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 quads. Now that's bullshit in most scenarios. Because if you're only making static or stationary objects, the best workflow I have found is to use N-Gons and then make your UVs very easily with ingons and then convert that to triangles before exporting to your texturing software or game engine. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I've made a Blender plugin to help with this called Engon Pro. It's for the uh, static objects, um, high to low poly Engon based workflow and it can speed things up for you. So links below. Now the main reason that quads are useful like if you want to use quads is when either you need to deform your mesh or when you need edge flow for subdivision surfaces then in those cases you absolutely 100% need quads now let's go over how to effectively get a plasticity model into blender and convert it into quads okay so first of all what you can see on your screen here I've got screencast keys on but yeah probably don't need to follow along too much with that. I've got two objects. The one on the left, you'll notice is like, it's basically a block out. And the one on the right, I've added all my details to. So if we turn on our, um, another Mac cap, which one looks cooler? Obviously this one over here has got all these nice shiny curves and all the curvatures there. And if we put on a different mat cap again, you'll see it looks a lot cooler than this one. All right. But this, when we take it over to Blender, and I'm going to use the Blender Bridge plugin. Um, if you don't have uh, know about this, I've made a video on it. Um, but we can import our two objects from Plasticity, and you'll see them here. Now, when we've clicked this refresh button and brought these in with our connection, these are only previews and you need to refacet it. So you, we'll just turn wireframe on. So you can refacet these to either triangles, which they are originally. So that doesn't do anything in terms of what you can see there, or you can refacet them to engons. Okay. And so what you can see here is we've got our two objects. I'll just turn wireframe off and they look more or less the same. If we click on this one, it's, if you look at our statistics up here, it's got, um, 9,000 faces and if we click on this one it's got 85,000 faces this um, if we wanted to remesh these into there's different ways that you can do it you can um, do a voxel remesh within blender or you can um, use the um, remesh uh, modifier um, or you could use geometry nodes so if we do this in smooth and then you just bring this up 
And if we turn wireframe on, you'll see that each step that we bring this up, and if I go any higher than this, the computer's really gonna start to freak out. So, and then if we turn our wireframe off, it's not even doing that great of a job. If we look at blocks, I mean, or we look at voxel, you can do that as well. And it's got a similar problem. Um, if we voxel remesh it and bring it down like this, okay. Um, the lower we go, the more it's gonna start to freak out. We can turn up a bit of adaptivity to try and, um, I think, it can get iffy anyway. So you, depending on what you're wanting to do, this could be fine. You know, this could be absolutely fine for what you want to do, but we're losing a little bit of our detail. And if we bring this voxel size down, I'm going to crash blender. It's just no two ways about it. So what I've found is um, the best thing uh, for this particular object, let's just take this uh, remesh modifier off. If I just wanted to keep this object static, I would use my plugin Angon Pro. Now I developed this for myself and um, I would just hit the create low poly button. Okay. And it's made a low poly. Um, and I can refine the detail. I'd say down to about half 0.5, maybe even 0.45. And we've got that um, and we've reduced that down um, we can merge verts as well. Okay, and you'll see a couple of artifacts here on the surface. If we look at um, if we look at this uh, with a different matte cap, you'll see these. But this would be our low poly, and then we'd bake our high poly details into that. So this is if I just wanted to be a static object. But if I wanted to go into a sub D workflow, we'll just hide this. I would use this add-on. This is called Quad Remesher. It's a little bit expensive. Um, the cheapest way to get it is if you have an iPad and you have the software Nomad Mad Sculpt, you can buy it for an extra price and it's cheaper, a cheaper way than um, doing any other way. Um, I can't remember how much it costs for Blender, but I'll put a link in the below. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, uh, but it's totally worth the money, right? So watch this. So we've got our wireframe here. I'm going to turn the adaptive size up. Now, sometimes this, if you hover over this, it tells you different things. And there's this option here that says use normal splitting. It says take care. This option is useful in specific cases, but should be off by default. Read the doc for more information. Uh, quad remesher will use the existing blah, 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 blah. It's useful to enable this option with smooth shade and auto uh, smooth enabled on smooth organic shapes. It's advised to disable it. Now I found in a lot of cases with um, uh, plasticity meshes, especially ones now, especially ones where um, you have these hard, sharp edges. So um, then you're going to get a better result, but just try it with both. Now I have, 9,600 faces. So I'm going to try and get it to the same amount of faces, which is 10,000 approximately. And I'm putting the adaptive size up high so it can add more detail to the areas that it needs to. Okay. So adaptive size allows you to control the quads locally, size locally, adapts to curvatures. The higher it is, the smaller the quads will be. So what you can see, if we just go back to plasticity, is the way that I've actually modeled this. Okay is I've only added curves or fillets to this one, these big curves where it affects the silhouette of the shape. And a little bit at the front here, I've done this, you'll probably see in the time-lapse, right? Where with this one, I've added detail, um, I've added detailing curves. So when we go back over into Blender, okay, let's just remesh this and see what happens, okay? I need to select an object, so let's just remesh this and see what happens. Okay, it looks more or less the same, and that's good. But now, if we look at our wireframe, it's all quads. And you can see that it's all quads around. Now, there was a little mistake here, so I'm going to go back a step. And I'm just going to make this 12,000 for now. Okay, and we're going to 
maybe turn this off and just see what happens okay I don't think that did a very good job so we're going to put this back on we'll remesh it okay and that is actually perfect okay so this use normal splitting especially if you've got these nice hard crispy edges is going to do really well now if we just turn wireframe off and actually go into edit mode you'll see that we've got all these uh, mark sharp um, objects so now let's just try and put a subdivision surface modifier on here and see what happens okay right so I'm gonna just go here I'm gonna go to select all sharp sharp edges and I'm going to go and then mark those as a seam okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select everything and I'm gonna clear sharp okay and look at what we've got there we've got these um, beautiful uh, curves I mean it's not perfect but there's places that we could probably work on this but you'll see around here okay it's not how it should be so let's just turn this off and have a look so let's select this seam so now that we've got that selected all the way around what we can do is we can press shift E Oh, actually we need to reactivate our subdivision surface so we can press shift E and we can bring that crease in like that so if we just turn all of our overlays off you can see what's happening there we're getting that all right and then you could do other things like you could um, try to I don't know we could try to inset something like this it might not work or something like this maybe yeah we can inset that and you might not be able to see what's exactly going on but if we go like that we've got that curve we inset it actually if we do this you might be able to see and we can insert that just to create some edge loops and now we've got that nice sharp um, edge on the top there again okay um, we could make these creased to get some of that sharpness back and as you can see this is now something that we could work with and what would be really cool as well is that we could go to um select our deform modifier simple deform right and we can bend that like that so if you were trying to make a stylized object for example we've got we can bring that out a little bit like that then we can add another simple deform and we can put it onto taper y and there you've got it now let's just hide this one and bring our other guy back so what we'll do we we'll delete everything just to show you what I mean we'll get our plasticity back up we'll refresh it we'll get rid of this one okay and let's see what happens when we try to quad remash this guy okay so we've got our wireframe we need to um, plasticity we need to refacet this don't ever forget to refacet that um, turn our wireframe I will leave it on and we'll go to quad remesher and we'll do the same details and we'll remesh this one okay and we'll turn our wireframe off and what you can see here is it's all mushy uh, there's artifacts everywhere and um, all of that so going back into plasticity if you want to convert to quads okay what you really want is these nice crispy edges everywhere no fillets except for the ones that define the form of your object um, and if you want to do a static object you can do it this way but I feel like um, back over in blender if we just go back a few steps this sub D object is pretty cool so um, I'll leave it there guys so hopefully that was helpful to you if so hit the bell notification like subscribe all of that business and I'll see you guys all in the next one Tschüss